Hey, what is up, YouTube? I'm back again with another video. Today is going to be a special video because this is a review of an item that I've wanted for a very, very long time. Um, I didn't necessarily pursue it too much, and I didn't make it necessarily a priority, but they are very difficult to find. So today we're going to be taking a look at my second pattern Ranger Body Armor Vest, or RBA. Now, some of you may know immediately why these are so popular, um, and that is because the movie Black Hawk Down made these popular based off of the actual event, Operation Gothic Serpent. Um, if you're not familiar with that, basically uh, in Somalia, um, in the early 90s, when the UN would drop off food deliveries and stuff, um, for those people in those poor areas that didn't have food, warlords would start to collect those um, at the, the uh, what they call it, at the docks, and they would distribute it to how they saw fit, um, which was not at all really. So basically, uh, the U.S. sent troops in to mitigate that, and it kind of worked, and it kind of didn't. Um, if you guys have seen the movie, it does a great job of explaining that in the very beginning. But basically, um, the people sent in to capture or take out the lead um, warlord out of power was the 75th Rangers and uh, the Army Delta. So this is the body armor that the Rangers wore. And um, basically with how popular the movie became, that's why these things are so popular and that these vests are specific to the US Army Rangers um, I think there's only two other people that used them one of them of all people was the Minot 91st Security Forces Squadron um, in 1996 they got a batch of these to replace their Pazgat vests um, which were flak jackets these were actually bulletproof and they did feature plates which would stop with the plate um, up to 30 caliber ball ammunition. My speculation is why Minot of all places got them is because that they are a nuclear base. Um, they have been since the Cold War and still are today. They have Minuteman missiles there. So I think that's why that the security forces got these of all people. Um, but I mentioned that this one is second pattern. So let me go into why or what makes it second pattern. So you can see the front plate, or the pocket for the front plate. This vest does not have the plates, um, but you can see the pockets for the plates, and the back one. And I don't have the exact measurements, but here's my modern RMA 10x12 level 4 plate, uh, NIJ certified. And you can see that the original ones um, were kind of about the same size. Now. The back one was a rectangle plate, and the front one had this just the single notch cut out for the right-handed shooter. You'll notice it did not have the notch cut out for a left-handed shooter. Um, this vest does predate this style, the shooter's cut plate. Um, these were not around when this vest was invented, so that's kind of like the infant stages of how we got to this design today. So it has soft body armor. The vest alone is level 3A, so it'll stop up to 44 Magnum. And then, like I said, with the plate, uh, 30 caliber, it's adjustable in the shoulders, the waist, and even features a waist cummerbund strap, which I think that this is really neat that they designed this um, because Nowadays, for most outer tactical carriers, or any outer armor carriers, this is just already there. Um, but back then, this was kind of the first vest that the military had that um, offered this feature. Here is my modern vest. This is a Gauls um, 3A vest, and you can see that outer carrier has that same strap. So it's really cool to see that um, kind of where that started to pop up. You can see that the tag is all worn. This entire vest is very worn. 
This is supposed to be elastic, but it's not really elastic anymore. And I'll show you guys the body armor panels. And I'll show you the tag on the other one. It's a little bit easier to get to. So you can see PS-930 Ranger body armor, 9mm slash 44 Magnum insert with plate upgrade to 30 caliber ball. Serial number, manufacturing date is 95. And this is size large. So <clears throat> the first pattern ones just had the plate in the front. The second pattern ones, that's this one that you guys are looking at right now, had the uh, front plate and the back plate. And then the third pattern ones had the front and the back, but they also featured a little Velcro pouch right here. Um, it's also not uncommon to find these things modified by Rangers with special pouches. Um, now we'll get into why it's so important that it has the second plate. So like I mentioned already, um, Operation Gothic Serpent um, with the Rangers. So this was the first time that these vests saw action was during Operation Gothic Serpent. And unfortunately for Sergeant James Casey Joyce with the 75th Ranger Regiment, um, he was shot in the back and killed on October 3rd, 1993, and their vests did not have the plates in the back. Um, and it wasn't that they took him out, which leads me to an inaccuracy with the movie Black Hawk Down. Um, one of the rangers, when they're getting ready, he says something about, I'm carrying 50 pounds of gear as it is, I don't need extra weighing me down. And he takes the back plate out of his vest. That's inaccurate because, like I said, they had the first pattern vests, and those vests did not even feature the spot for the plate. Um, so it's not that any of the rangers took them out, it's just that they just didn't have them yet. Um, but it was because of that specifically that they redesigned these with the front and the back plate. You could argue that he might still be alive today if he had a plate in the back. Um, I don't know the circumstances of it, but it definitely would have helped. So. Anyways guys, that's why that's so important, the front and the back plate. Um, I'll throw it on for you guys. Even though I wear an XL and this is a large, with the straps being warped the way that they are, it uh, doesn't fit too bad. That's how you put on the vest. Now the sides would velcro together and you can kind of see the velcro there. So you would give about an inch or two of overlap on each side. You'll notice that I don't have that, but since I'm not wearing this for actual protection, it doesn't really matter. But it does look really good overall. <laughs> These vests are not cheap. Um, when they do come up, if they do have the plates, they can definitely fetch uh, $450, if not higher, for the vest. Um, this one, in the condition that it's in, with no plates, I only paid $275 after shipping, and that was um, shipping from Alaska, so it was going to be expensive anyways. So I think I got a pretty good deal on that. Um, but I really like how used it is. Um, it definitely shows its wear and tear. There were a few reproductions made. Here is a close look-alike. And by close, I mean it's woodland camo and it's a vest. Um, but I also heavily modified this thing. I took off the back plate pocket, took off the front uh, Velcro, um, and I think that's about it. But these are the cheap ones from China that you used to be able to get for about $25. I looked on eBay recently and they're actually up to $50 now. Um, there are two other companies that make reproductions currently. Another Airsoft website, that's their 
Japanese based. They told me that they only sell them in size large, but they didn't specify if that's like a Japanese large or an American large. Um, I'll post a link to that down below. I think those are $158. Um, and there's a group on Facebook that makes really good reproductions of the RBAs. Evike and Airsoft GI used to sell them. Um, they quit selling those probably about 13 years ago though. Um, but from what I remember, they were really good reproductions. So anyways guys, that's gonna wrap it up for my video on the RBA or Ranger, Ranger Body Armor Vest. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something new. If you guys have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them down below. And as always, have a nice day.